So as many of you know, I spent most of my life as a novelist. If you listen to Another Kingdom or read Werewolf Cop or True Crime, you know that I'm actually uh, incredibly good at it. And, uh, and I've studied stories all my life. And very early on, I came upon an essay, by a, a famous essay by a German, uh, I think he was a mythologist, who wrote about the following incident. A professor is at his desk. He's trying to work. His little daughter is annoying him. And finally, just so he can concentrate, he takes three matchsticks that have already been burnt so they're not dangerous and he hands her the three matchsticks and he says go and play so she'll leave him alone so she goes off and plays with the three matchsticks and one of them is Hansel and one of them is Gretel and one of them is the witch and she's playing with the matchsticks he goes back to work and he's working for about 20 minutes when suddenly his daughter lets out a shriek of terror and the professor leaps up and he looks at her and says what's the matter what's the matter and she says the witch take the witch away. I can't touch the witch anymore. It's a matchstick, right? And the, then the professor writes about the fact that this is the way stories and mythology work, that they transfer uh, power from the imagination to the emotions. So we all go through this when we're watching a movie or watching a TV show nowadays, and the heroine dies, say, and we all cry, even though we know she doesn't exist. She doesn't exist, and yet our hearts are broken that this girl is dying because we've had a transfer from the imagination to the emotions. Here is a story about myself in which I behaved like a total idiot many, many, many years ago when I was still out of my mind. I was working as a news writer for a big New York radio station, and it was very intense, very high-pressure work. We had to de deliver stories, a whole newscast every half an hour. Sometimes we had to write on a deadline of a minute. Uh, sometimes we just had to get things on the air as fast as possible, get, gather the facts, put stories on the air. A hurricane was coming. And our orders were basically to terrify our audience, because when you terrify the audience, they listen. They want to know what's going on. So a hurricane was heading toward New York City, toward Manhattan, and all morning long, every half an hour, we were terrifying the audience. We had, we told you what was going to happen when this hurricane hit. All the windows in your apartment were going to blow out. Tape them with, uh, um, you know, duct tape to make sure the glass doesn't fly all over the place. We had experts on. We had public officials telling people to stay indoors and, not, you know, evacuate and all this. Finally, just like the little girl with the matchstick, I panicked. I panicked. My, my wife and my little daughter were at home in an apartment where the one entire wall was made out of glass, and I could just see the glass coming in, flying through the window as the hurricane came roaring into New York, blowing the glass out and just cutting them all to pieces. And I called my wife and I said, get some duct tape, type up the windows. And she said, what? Are you nuts? But being a loving and adoring wife and devoted wife, she actually, poor woman, went out and taped <laughs> with duct tape. Of course, the hurricane never came and never hit. You know, it was just us because it was a slow news day. It was just us trying to keep our listeners engaged, terrifying them. And I had had a transfer from my imagination to my emotions. This brings me to yesterday on the news as the press went entirely insane. Today, I'm going to read your letters that you sent me in answer to the question, what would Trump have to do to get you to desert him? You, here's the, here is the spoiler alert. You are sane and intelligent the people on the news are out of their minds. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show.